Ladies and gentlemen, Prince and the Revolution. That's how much we can afford on a band. Hey man, you want to come play your step? How you guys doing tonight? Good? I am probably the last comedian, so you won't have to sit on these damn things any longer. Anyone's ass numb yet? Huh? No? You heard him right. My name is Freeway. That is my actual, honest to God, born with name. Yeah. I'd ask my dad, I'd be like, why did you name me Freeway? And he'd be like, dude, Quaaludes make you do some weird shit. You could have been off ramp. You could have been urinal cake. No officer, I'm not stopping. Farrell. Yeah. He was a hippie. My mom was a hippie. She's not anymore. She's been hallucinating. She's a housewife <laughs> for the last 25 years. I, I remember when I was growing up, I, you know, it wasn't easy growing up with a name like Freeway. It really wasn't. I got picked on a lot. I remember I went to this event once, and I was going to go through the entrance, and this person, it just makes me emotional. This person was like, as I'm going in, they're like, you can't come in here. First of all, the weird freaking name. We don't like hippies in here. We need people who have jobs. You can't come in. No hippies. Go. And I was like, come on, Grandma. It's Thanksgiving. What the hell? Jeez, lady. Just so you guys know, here's a little bit of uh, ancient history for you. In, in, in ancient languages, my name means he who comes fast. <laughs> That's mean, God, you'd laugh at that, jeez. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I'm getting older, I'm in my mid-50s uh, now. So as I'm getting older, things are changing naturally. Anyone here ever have hopes and dreams? Do you remember those? <laughs> remember hopes and dreams? Did you have any hopes and dreams when you were younger? No? No, just a few? I have one hope and one dream right now. One, I want to fart once without coughing, <laughs> or vice versa. I'd like to sneeze without changing my pants. That would be awesome. <laughs> Nowadays, having sex with me is a lot like having sex with an oily beach ball. <laughs> Lots of colors. At one point, I'm going to deflate. You can't hold on to me. I am at my best sexually, I have noticed, when I'm trying to get the pudding out of the bottom of the cup. Because I'm all... No, 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 no. It works. Getting way older. I actually now... Um, you know how people all identify as something? You know what I'm talking about? I identify as a kitten. You know what I'm talking about? They, everyone seems to do that nowadays. I identify as lazy. No, no, I'm serious. I have emotional support sweatpants. And ladies, you can pet them. I am part of the I don't, do I have to movement? Really? God, I'm just the young. I'm getting lazier and lazier. You guys might not know this, but comedy doesn't pay very fucking well. <laughs> So in addition to doing comedy, I am a security guard. Oh. Yeah, on a graveyard shift. First of all, has anyone here ever worked a graveyard shift? You have? It's a different world, isn't it? You live a different life than everyone else. Let me give you guys a few examples of what I mean. When you work a graveyard shift versus work, well, you guys are day walkers. <laughs> when you work a graveyard shift, First of all, if, if, if you see a young girl and she's playing with a balloon and she's just having a good time during the day, you see her and you're like, oh, that's cute, little girl with a balloon. You might wonder where her parents are, but you know, you think that's cute. At 3.30 in the morning, if you see that same little girl with a balloon, she's opening a gateway to hell. <laughs> okay? It, in the middle of the day, it just rained. You see a beautiful rainbow, you take a picture. Hey, rainbow. If I see a rainbow at 3.30 in the morning, my shit just kicked in. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the truth. 
I am the great I am a graveyard security guard and I am the worst security guard you have ever met. Terrible. Horrible security guard. If I ask you for your ID, a taco will work. I kid you not, like you can out I will never chase you. You can out mosey me. This is literally how you can get away from me. There you go. That's it. That was the whole run I do. <laughs> now, I'm going to get back into the security guard thing in a second, but I want to ask you guys, do you guys, not just, but do you guys believe in secure, uh, conspiracy theories? You guys follow me on, you guys follow conspiracy theories? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Just the general conspiracy. Like, let, let's take, for example, the moon landing. A lot of people don't think that really happened. Some people say, oh yeah, of course it happened. Now, I would believe it happened because I could easily believe the government would spend money on something that just didn't make any freaking sense to do. Sure. But here's where I have a problem with the moon landing. It was 1969 and they landed a lunar module on the moon. But before they did that, they claim they landed another lunar module with a camera hooked to it. <laughs> And they were sending real-time images from the moon, 1969, to your TVs. Right? You following me there? Meanwhile, in 1976, I'm wearing a tinfoil hat. I'm holding a coat hanger, and I got two fingers on those screws on back of the TV so my mom can watch Days of Our Lives. All right? It's 2024. I'm texting my mom, I'm coming home for dinner, and you want to know what she's getting? I'm coming. So no, I don't necessarily believe that they did that. All right, now, as a security guard, I walk around in all this little area, and there's all these bushes. And as I walk around one night, this is an honest to God true story, as I'm walking around from inside one of the bushes, I hear, the candy man can. And my first thought was, God, please, please be imagining that. Please. And this guy comes out of the bushes. I swear to God, he looked like the human embodiment of animal from the Muppets. He had the bushy hair. He was doing the <laughs> thing that animal does. You guys know what I'm talking about. You watch the Muppets. You've all been stoned at least once. He is only wearing moon boots, a pair of boxers, and a parka. That is it. And then he says to me as he approaches me what I consider the scariest sentence I have heard in my entire life. I got something tasty for you. Oh, oh shit, I thought. Yeah, right, huh? He starts to come towards me. He reaches into his parka, and I'm like, oh, God, here it goes. I'm about to die. He pulls out of his pocket a glass with three raw eggs in it. He looks me straight in the eyes and goes, Skittles! Oh. And I was like, whoa! That was not what I was expecting, and those Skittles have a little too much protein in them for me. No thank you, dude, you gotta go. And he's, he got mad at me. This dude got pissed. He was like, who the hell wants, you don't wanna taste the rainbow? That's crazy! And he's splashing egg everywhere, and I'm like, dude, no, back off, just go. And then he starts to walk away, and he's like, I don't understand who doesn't want to taste the rainbow. And he goes around a bush, and he disappears, and I can kind of hear him screaming for a minute. And then I got to wondering, you know how they say we live in a simulation? Some people believe things are fake. There was no way that incident could, be, could have been real. He had to have gone around the corner, pulled out a phone, and went, uh, it's agent number 789. Yeah, I did the Skittles thing. <laughs> fat guy. Security guard. Yeah, the fat one. No, he didn't chase me. Um, boxers? No, why would I wear tight? Yeah, I get tidy whities are crazier. I'm not, uh, they're not six. That had to be what happened because there's no way that shit was real, right? I don't like being a security guard anymore. <laughs> I'm also somebody's father. Do you believe that shit? 
Let me ask you guys a question. Who here has kids? Yeah. You know what's funny? Most everybody admitted it, but you kind of went, mm, mm, kind of mine. I've never liked kids. I don't like kids. First of all, here's what I don't like about kids. They always want something. Can I have a glass of water? I'm hungry. Can I have a new toy? Will you unlock the cage? Can I eat in the house with you? I buy the good dog food. What the hell? Yeah, I got a son. You believe that? I'm somebody's dad. Just in case anyone here is wondering about having kids, if you got to bet the devil learn to play the banjo. Oh God, he's a, he's. I lucked out as a guy who doesn't like kids. My son is six foot seven, right? So he's huge. He also tested as a genius. Yeah, he has a genius level IQ. Not cool. Not this kid is. You got to be aware of everything with him. But when he got into chemistry, now I have to know where my fucking cat is at all times. And my son's like, don't worry about it. Just don't feed him after midnight or get him wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he woke me up one morning. Dad, Dad, get up, get up. All right, what's going on? He's like, do we have any copper wire and magnesium? <laughs> what? Do you have any idea what time it is? No, I took my alarm clock apart. <laughs> what? Why did you take your alarm clock apart? I'm making a taser. <laughs> yeah, you giggle. You know, that taser went off once. Now every morning at 4.15, I pee myself and laugh a little bit. <sighs> he's, a, he's a handful, this kid. He got really into the show Breaking Bad. You guys familiar with that? You know Breaking Bad? You weren't all born under rocks? <laughs> He got super into that show. Uh, I came home one night after a show, and here's my kid. He has my kitchen destroyed. There's crap everywhere. There's things boiling. There's beakers everywhere. There's all kinds of just chemistry everywhere. And he is standing at the end of my counter with a hazmat suit on, bringing up blue glass. And I'm like, oh my God, no. And I'm, son, what are you doing? And here's my kid. <laughs> I'm making the meth from Breaking Bad. And I'm like, oh God, no. You can't do that. That's incredibly insane. I, my, I cannot believe you would ever in a million years make the, wait a minute, they made a lot of money on this. <laughs> no, you can't do this. This is insane. He's like, dad, calm down. Calm the hell down. You know how you owe me a bunch of money? This isn't real meth. This is rock candy. That's what they use on Breaking Bad. I was going to take this to school and sell it to the diabetics to get the money you owe me. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Well, then go for it. Have you ever owed your... Have you, you said you had kids? You ever owed your kid money? Never owed your kid money. I owed my son... You, okay. No one else here. Just me and you. Fuck the rest of these people, they're not listening. I owed my son a dollar. Here's how this happened. I take my son to the store. We're gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy a little book to write my jokes in. That's what all comedians do. As we're standing in the store, my son is with me and I hear him say next to me, so you're gonna buy yourself a little book to write those dad jokes in? And I thought, oh shit, he's gonna make fun of me and this is gonna go bad. So I grabbed the kid, we run up to the counter, and I grab a book and we get up to the counter and I set the book down and the first thing the kid says is, yeah, he'll take the Taylor Swift book. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to a book I grabbed. Oh. So I set the book down and the lady was like, the book is $3. I only had $2 on me. So I'm like, son, can I borrow a buck? A buck. First of all, this kid pulled out a lot of money this big. And I said, where did you get all that money? And he says to me, me and grandma have something going on. <laughs> they didn't. You ready for this? He had taken out two cell phones in my name and was selling time on the internet to the other kids in school and making bank. And he got caught because one of the kids sent something to the office that printed. 
And when I told my son, you realize what you did is wrong, he said, yeah, printing costs more. <laughs> so he whips out a dollar, he hands it to me, I'm like, we're going to talk more about that later. And we're walking out of the store, I pay for the thing, we're going out of the store, and I say, son, I appreciate you lending me that dollar, that was really nice of you. And he's like, dad, I'm always there for you, you're always there for me, I'm glad to do it, and when we get home, I'll need that two dollars back. And I'm like, wait a minute, two dollars? Dude, it was like a dollar. And he's like, yeah, no, I get it, and I understand. And like I said, I'm always there for you, Dad. And when we get home, I'll need all three bucks back. <laughs> like, three bucks? Man, I said it was a dollar, and he, it was a dollar. And he's like, yeah, I heard you. When we get home, I'm going to need all four dollars back. I owe the kid the house now. <laughs> like, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. Cut to three weeks later. I got a new job, I was celebrating, I wasn't a security guard at the time, so I had a bonfire. Thank God I told my son to go in the house and buy, and get my, not buy, but get my, my poker, my favorite poker. All of us men have, know what I'm talking about. So he's gone, and I hear something hissing in the bonfire, so I look into it, I only remember hearing the explosion and seeing a flash, but I got caught on fire. Now, a side note, when I say on fire, I mean in flames, up in boosh. And three things went through my head when I was on fire. One naturally was, oh, this sucks. <laughs> Another one was, oh God, I don't want to die in front of my son right now, who's standing there going, whoa. And I'm like, I please somebody put me out. And then the third thought I had, which was really odd, was something smells delicious. I need that recipe. I smell pork in Chinese food. I managed, I had a, 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 go, a, a goat situation going. I had several goats because I hate mowing my own lawn. That's the absolute God truth. So I rolled it as I was in fire. I rolled around on the ground trying to find the, 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 the trough for the goats. And as I did that, I was leaving a trail of fire. My son said, yeah, fat does that. <laughs> right? So I roll over to the, to the trough. I pour it on myself. I, I tip it over. I put out the fire. And I'm just glad I'm out. And as I'm laying there, it starts to get kind of warm again right about in here. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, am I catching fire again? No, I'm not. That's a different kind of warmth. I pry my eyes open. And there's my son. <laughs> and I'm like, what you doing, boy? And he says, you were smoldering. <laughs> you got my money? Oh. Yeah. I hear you got my money every day. And that night, for some reason, he had me sign a waiver. Uh-huh. I hear you got your money all the damn time. You got my money. You got my money. You guys want to hear an interesting story about you got my money with him? This is a great one. Have, do you guys know what a CPAP machine is? Yeah? Everyone here know what a CPAP machine is? Okay. For those of you who don't know what a CPAP machine is, I like to refer to it as a self-touching oven. Okay? I learned that on burrito night. Let me explain to you what it does. A... CPAP machine is a little machine that some of us have to wear at night in order to stay alive because our body said, if you go to sleep, because of the choices you've made, I'm going to kill us. <laughs> so it helps us breathe. So what it does is it takes the air in the room and it turns it through a little tube and it puts it onto your face and then you can breathe. It puts compressed air into yourself. You follow me? You guys all get that, right? Okay. So you also know how when you're sleeping late at night and you just get that feeling somebody's in the room with you? Do you know what I'm talking about? You feel like somebody's there, and you just, you don't know what, you, just, you know. I'm sound asleep, and I pop my eyes open. And there's my son standing next to the bed with his pants around his ankles. He's got the devil's onion ring pressed against my CPAP machine. Now, for those of you who don't know, you wear a mask when you're wearing a CPAP machine, so... You sound like this all the time. 
that everything you say sounds kind of weird and perverted. For example, I'd like an egg roll with my number six. Sounds kind of perverted, don't it? So I say to my son, Hi son, what you doing? And my son says, Oh, just hanging out. Just thought I'd see what you were up to. I'm sleeping, son. It's 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, I know. I'm just, you know, checking on you. Son, I'll kill you. I swear to God, I'll kill you. My kid looked me deep in the eyes, as caring as he could, and said, You got my money? <laughs> Thank you for coming out, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate having all you guys out here. Are all the comedians still here? Yeah. No? Let's bring them all up here real quick so we can say goodbye. Come on. Come on up here. We appreciate you guys doing this. We're going to have an all ladies show coming up, I believe, in March. Have you settled on the date yet? Let's give it up for everybody here. I'm going to pass the mic. They're going to say their name. We're going to start with our demo. Hey, Greg. Hi, I'm Pete Nelson. I'm Sam Allen. Goodbye, Sarah. Yeah.